Hello, everybody. This video is about the idea of growth rates. So we'll talk about simple growth rates, compound growth rates. The setting for this is you start with just very basic algebra. We build up the structures until we get to a point where we can explain it in terms of calculus. The idea is to model population growth. So this is what we're going to start off with. We're going to start off with the setting where we have a single bacterium and it's going to reproduce by budding. And this setting is the way I cooked up the problem is that every daughter cell won't be able to reproduce. So what's going to happen is that the initial bacteria is going to produce all the offspring. So just drawing a picture of that, if you start with a single bacteria like this, then it's going on with its life. And every one of these arrows is a single time step. But along the way, it's having offspring. So it has one here, it's a daughter cell that is not able to reproduce. So let's mark some time steps. So this is time t equals zero, initial time, time t equals one, t equals two. Let's move down a little bit. T equals three. T equals four. So at the first time step from zero, T equals zero, T equals one, there's one offspring. And then this offspring continues to go on with its life, but it's not able to have any offspring, so it just continues. In the second step, this one is able to have another one. and so on. Let's move this down a little bit. So these continue going. And so we can see what the population size is on each step. So it starts off at one, and then it increases by one every time. So this is going to be time. This is going to be population. The population starts at one, and then goes to two, three, four, five. Now this is a very simple model. What we can do to change it is there are two things involved that we can do to change it. The first thing that we can try is to affect the period that it takes for it to reproduce. So you see that in each step from t equals zero and t equals one and t equals two, the time that we're measuring might be some kind of units that we're using to actually measure it. So it can be in seconds. So t here could be in seconds or it could be in some other unit. But this bacterium can reproduce at its own rate. So the rate that we're measuring at isn't the natural rate for the bacterium. So one way to look at this is just to say, okay, let's just have an example. So maybe, so the natural, time step, for the bacterium reproduction, or bacteriums, I guess. Is not the same. As the units. See, as a unit. Of time. Um, in units T. So this right here is our units here, T. So let's just have an example. We just do is we just take the same picture up here. 
just copy everything. Because the idea isn't changing, it's just the time that's changing. So when we copy the picture, it still looks the same, but it's like watching the movie at a different speed. So what, what's the thing that changes here? Well, the picture is the same. We do want to, so here it is. So what's the thing that happens? So the populations are still the same. Still one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, just trying to highlight this thing. And then for timestamp, Okay, well, let's say that the time it takes to go from one step to the next is one fourth. So it's doing it faster. So at time t equals zero, it's still at one cell. And then you go from the next one, the time is one fourth. We have two, two fourths, we have three, three fourths, we have four, four fourths, which is one, we have five. So, what do we see from this? What we can do is write down the population. Population. Uh, maybe we go back up here and write the population. So here the population for this example is we started off with one and then we added t to it. t equals zero, it's just one and then it increases linearly with slope one. For this case, p of t is one, we start off at one. And then the speed that we're increasing at is actually four times the speed that it was before. And one way to see this is, okay, what's the change of P over change in T? Well, there's two ways to view this. One, we can measure delta T in terms of unit of T, which is just one. But what happens over the change of one unit of time in this units? Well, we had a change of four. So it's four. The other way to measure delta P over delta T is to think about it in terms of units of P. So think of it in terms of P's um, perspective. In order to get a change of p for one, how long do you have to go to change by one? Well, you have to go by one fourth. See, a change of one, one fourth, one fourth, which is also four. So you see, in both these cases, you can measure the rate of change in terms of four, but it's just based off perspective. This perspective right here is about the perspective of how long per a particular pe period of time, which is our perspective. It's the perspective of this person measuring. This right here is more natural based on the, po the perspective of the population. But either way, these, because there's the units of, it's because of the measure, because there are the units that we're using to measure is coming into this. Regardless, our units still play a, play a role. So here's P of T is one plus 14. Now what we can also say is what happens if instead of having just the single offspring, you have the same time step, but then you have multiple offspring. So let's do that example here. So we have our single bacteria. And then what's happening every time step? Well, let's say it's going to, um, every time it reproduces, it actually gives off two. So there's one here and one here. Now what happens with the next step? Well, these two right here continue going on with their life. And then this one reproduces the same way as before. And then this pattern continues. This right here goes here. And you see, I'm just, we have the same picture, but instead of a single bacteria, we have a group of bacteria. 
So if we compare these pictures, we have a group now instead of a single one. Make a little more space. And then this picture continues. So I'm going to start just drawing dots for the bacteria. So what do we see here? So what's the, how can we express the population? So P of T, well, it starts off at one and it's increasing at a certain rate times T. And what is this rate? Well, we say, well, if this time step is one, right? So if this was T equals zero, then this is T equals one. Then when we go from here to here, we increase by two. We go from here to here, we still increase by two. It's these right here that are the change. So we have two. Now, what you might wanna say is, okay, what happens if you have both of these types of situations at the same time? You have a different rate of reproduction in terms of time, but then you also have a different rate in terms of how many are produced. Like for instance, what you can do is say, okay, how is this picture similar to the other picture? If you just look at this right here, you go from one to three. When does that happen? Well, that's kind of like this. Oh, sorry. That's kind of like this, where you ignore this piece right here. This picture right here looks exactly like this. And what it's trying to tell you if you just look at it, is that the same type of behavior is happening, but there's something that has to do with this rate. There's a single thing that we can describe a rate which represents how fast it's growing. And if you just look at that rate, it creates a natural unit of, a unit of time for the population. So one, um, a natural unit of time for the population, maybe you could say the amount of time it takes to go from one to three. That's one way to measure a natural unit. And this single number can help us think about how everything is growing. So in terms of a general reproduction rate, we basically take the same sort of picture and we just reproduce it. So we have a single vector here. So there's two things that are gonna change. The first thing is time units. So we see this is still gonna be t equals zero, but let's say this is t equals something. So in our example, it'd be one fourth maybe. And then reproduces here and it creates a whole bunch of bacteria. Maybe six of them, looks like a domino, I guess. Um, not quite. And almost done with this. This is where, if you're in the video, you fast forward it. Okay, so what we see is we can look at the rate of change as it's growing. So for this particular example, we have P of T, so it starts off at one. And what is the rate? Well, there's two things that come into the rate. It's the natural rate of, of producing something. That's this right here. It comes from this. And then what happens every time there is a production? How many are produced? So if you just think about it, okay, there's one fourth, last time we had four. And then this time, instead of multiplying by two, we're gonna multiply by six. So this could be one plus 24 T. Let's just make sure, yeah, we were at the formula here. One way to look at this 
is to say, okay, delta P over delta T. Well, how much is changing over a particular time? So the natural point of time, you could either look at the units of this. So this is gonna be one. And what are the units? How many, how many things increased? Well, there's six here and then there's four. So this is gonna be 24. Another way to see it is to say, okay, well, what's the natural unit of things being produced? Well, that's just six. And how long did it take to produce that? Well, one fourth, which is also 24. In another case, we obtain the same formula. So now what we can do is we have a very general case the general case is you just take this picture and instead of starting with a single mother bacteria, you start with a whole bunch of bacteria. So let's just do two. It's very nice. You can just take the picture and copy it. I'm not going to force you to sit here through that again. Let's make a little space. Perfect, and I will zoom out so you can see this properly. Ooh, that was way too much. Just trying to do this. Okay, this looks good. So you see, is you can do the whole analysis that we did earlier. At one time step, instead of creating six, it's creating 12. So if you wanted to redraw the picture, which I don't know if you really want to, you draw the picture like this. There are two here, and then they go to two. And then they go to two. And then they go to two. And they go to two. And then on each step, instead of creating just six, it creates a group of 12. So the setup that you have is going to be very, very similar. You basically would get P of T is the initial plus the growth rate. So this is going to be 12 times the fact that we had a period of one fourth time step. It'd be 48, you know, just two times earlier. So this right here is the general setup that we would have. Now, one way you could say it is, what happens if you have something different in the problem? So instead of these times, you just have a particular time unit. So let's come up with some kind of unit. Um, you can say this right here is going to be a period time t equals k. That's how long it takes to go from here to here. And then how many are going to be reproduced? I mean, how many are going to be produced? You have m. And then you have initial population of p naught. So then you say p of t is p naught plus delta P over delta T times T. And this right here is a constant rate, so you don't need to worry about, this right here is gonna be the simple expression that you get. When, so the natural way to calculate delta P over delta T is to say, okay, well, over this period of time K, how many are produced? Well, how many are produced are gonna be M. And so you see that P of T is P naught plus, delta, um, plus M over K T. And this is our general formula for this simple growth. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this a little bit. 
we're going to go through this very simple situation and then we're going to say, okay, well, each of these individual bacteria, they can actually reproduce too. That's the only thing that made this problem really simple is because each of the individual ones are produced and then they just kind of stick around. They don't do anything, they just stick around. The other ones are going to now produce. So basically what's going to happen is each of these are going to go into here and it's going to increase this to seven. And then each of these are going to reproduce and then it gets more and more complicated. But we'll start off just like before with a simple situation. Ooh. Sorry, I apologize for the zoom. Okay, so in this case, we have bacterium that produces by binary division. So I'm actually gonna draw that. And then every time it reproduces, it's gonna reproduce two cells that can reproduce in the exact same way. So what happens? I'm not even gonna have two different colors this time because these are identical to the ones before. And this is a very common tree if you've seen it before. I actually have to be very careful when I draw it so that I don't run out of space because everything grows exponentially. And so it gets very easy to use up all your space. The reason why it's problematic is that area grows quadratically when you increase the diameter, but the number of dots here are gonna grow exponentially. And so you have to be careful on how you space everything. So we have one, two, three. Then I have one more. This is getting really crowded. And you get a feel here why exponential growth can't actually last forever because people start running out of space and resources and everything. So let's just label them with blue. It's a bit easier to see that way. Okay, so what we have is this setup here. And fortunately, it's not very linear in terms of the way it's drawn. So this is t equals one here. This is a single generation. This is the second generation. This is the third generation. Again, apologize for slant here. Okay, so we see the different generations and we can see how many are there. What you see is every single time this right here goes here, and then there's another one. What happens? This one goes here, and then there's another one. This one goes here, and then there's another one. What you can see is that every time it doubles, because on each step, each of these small, each of these individual one doubles. So this one here doubles. This one right here doubles. This one 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 here doubles, they all double. And so you can see, it, you can go through and manually count them if you wanted to, but the idea is that the population grows by doubling. So P of T, so with initial condition, initial population P1, P0 is one, the P of T is gonna be two to the T every time it doubles. And so what you see here is that's the simple rate that you get. One thing you can calculate is delta P over delta T, just to, just to find out what it is. And these, remember, this is different than the simple case that we had earlier, where rate was always constant. And what that means is you could measure the rate over any time period. You can measure the rate for, you can measure the rate going from here to here, or you can measure the rate going from here to here. Because it was a constant rate everywhere, you can measure the slope in any way you want. That's analogous to when you have a line 
you can pick any two points on the line to calculate the slope. You can use these two or these two or both of these. The point is that because it's a line, the slope is the same everywhere. What we're going to see is that it's going to be an exponential like growth, like, like this. So when you calculate the slope between here to here, that's different than the slope between here and here. And when we talk about rate, the rate of the growth, we're actually talking about the instantaneous rate, which changes depending on how much population you have, how big the population is. We're talking about this slope right here. But again, we'll do that in a second. So delta P over delta T for the initial time step. So let's say T going from zero to one. So what we do is you have change in P is two and the change in T is one, so it's just two. Delta P over delta T going from T equals zero. Say T starts at zero and goes to four. And what's this? The change in population goes from one to two to the four. over time, which was four minus zero, which is four. And so what do you see here? This right two to the four is 16 minus one. So that's 15 over four. And this right here, if you just reduce it a little bit, this is 12 fourths. So that's three and three fourths. In particular, this right here is bigger than this. So what you see is if you're gonna measure the rate, you can't just measure the rate from here to here or the rate from here to here, they're different. So the kinds of rates that you're interested in, it's you have to be careful because the rate is changing over time. In particular, it's bigger here because you're including the fast growth over here. This right here is slow growth. Each of the individual components are growing at the same rate. Because the number of components is increasing, the total is increasing very fast. So how can this get more complicated? What you can do is instead of having this set up here with, we're basically going to repeat what we had earlier. Instead of having a single time step increase, you just increase by a different number. So here we'll increase by one fourth like we did last time. So this is still t equals zero. This is gonna be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. Now, what is the rate of change now? Well, I mean the population still so starts off at one and then it's gonna be doubling and it's going to be doubling over. It's kind of difficult to kind of fool this around in your head. You have to maybe think about it. One way to do it is just kind of see what happens. So what happens when you plug in 1 fourth? Well, it doubles, which means you need to put a 4 here. So that P of 1 fourth is 2 to the 4 times 1 fourth, which is 2 to the 1, which is 2. I wanted this to be true. That's why I chose to put a 4 T here. And if that's a little mysterious, yeah, that's a little weird. Um, it's the same sort of thing that happened earlier. If you actually look up here, the linear growth. With the linear growth, when we had a faster rate, what we did is we took t and we replaced it with 4t. Because basically what happens is that when you have a faster rate of growth, it changes the natural units for the growth. So whenever you see T, you're going to replace it with 4T. That's just the idea. You have to be careful about implementing these sorts of ideas. But that's the idea involved. That's the idea of the rate, instantaneous rate. So what you see here is that the exact same thing happened. You replace T with 4T. It's basically the same sort of thing that happens when you have a graph like this, like X squared. And you replace X with 2 times X. And when you insert it like this, when you put a two on the inside, it actually makes it narrower. But what that means narrower is that it actually is increasing faster. 
it's the same sort of thing that's going on. So anyway, you have P of four. This is a different, this is the way it would change over time. Now, what happens if instead of change in time, you had a change in the number of things that are reproduced, that I mean that are produced, every reproduction step. So we still have the same times, but instead of a single bacterium produced, it's going to produce, I don't know, three. And that's going to be annoying. So instead of three, let's just do four. Um, because I'd like to use this picture somehow. So instead of four, what you would do is it's going to be like a doubling of this picture. And this is really messy, but we're going to have to try to do it again. So it's going to be four. And is this even a good idea? Let me, let me see what I tried earlier, because this is going to get out of hand really quickly. Turns out I didn't try it before. So we're doing it. We're going into uncharted territory. Um, let's do four because you're going to see that it, you're going to see this picture hiding inside of it, hopefully. So actually, what I'm going to have to do is draw it in a circle because it's going to get way too crowded. Let's go over here. So I'm going to go this way. Well, actually, the first ones need to be big. I think. Okay, so now I have four. So one, two, three, four. Again, if you're watching the video, you could watch this faster speed or fast forward it. I'm just trying. You see, it gets kind of crazy. It's almost like each of these has a hand. See, we've gone from one to step. So four, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, three, four. Oh no. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's just two, three, four. You can get a real good feel for how exponential growth works. You see that this is getting really ugly. These are the kind of diagrams that you draw when you try to calculate the number of possibilities. When you do permutations, combinations, it, things get out of hand really quickly. So what do we have here? One, two, three, four. So that's one, two, three, four. We're basically at this stage and we're still not done, which means I need to change color. So this is actually reasonable. I'm actually gonna highlight all of the, okay. Let me just change color. So I'm gonna change it to blue now. Oh boy. Feel like I missed some. Oh gosh, this is terrible. So I have four here. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, three. Or, yeah, we're, I'm not at the point. I'm at the point where I'm not even concerned that you can actually see what this is. The point is just to draw the right number of lines. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
started just making these lines really small so that when I draw them, it doesn't take up any more space than it needs to. So I was able to fit most of this in. It creates this nice little fractal like the thing though. I also stopped drawing the dots a long time ago. I almost forgot these two over here. It's just I feel like you could be here all day. This is it reminds me of that. Uh, there's a story. I don't remember exactly where it came from, but where somebody was said, "Oh, if you start off with a grain of rice, like his reward for something or her reward was, you start off with a single grain of rice." And you put it on a checkerboard, a chessboard, which has um, 64 squares. It's an eight by eight grid. And then what you say is, okay, start with one grain of rice on one square. And then as you go on, through, through each of the squares, just double the amount of grains of rice. And so by the time you get to the end, you have like, I don't even know if the number is, it's just two to the two to the 63, which is an extremely huge number. So we're done. And I don't know how many there are. I can calculate it, but I don't know off the top of my head if I don't calculate it. So this right here is t equals zero. Gen zero generation. This is t equals one. Trying to make it narrow so you can see it. This is t equals two. And then you have here, the tip of these red ones, which increasingly gets confused with the tips of the blue ones. So here is gonna be generation t equals three. Let me use a different color for yeah, let's use yellow. And you see right at the edges here. Just this huge ugly mess. In fact, I probably should redo this. Um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the recording and then I'm gonna fix it. Okay, I believe I fixed the errors. I Move the red ones around a little bit and um, redrew the small blue ones. So hopefully, let's see, this is getting very, very, actually looks a little hairy because of the, the small little things. I wasn't exactly able to get everything, to get all the arrows in the way I wanted it. Because I want all yellow to contain all the blue arrows. It requires a little bit of effort. And remember, the in terms of population growth, there is no reason, the, the only reason why we draw these so small is so we can draw them. But really what happens is that all of these offspring are the same size. 
I mean, when they're fully grown, they'll, they'll be the same size as the originals. So the reason why I have to draw them small is so they fit. But basically what happens is they got to spread out because you're just going to run out of space really quickly. And how quickly is captured by the idea of the rate? And the rate, like we talked about earlier for the linear growth, I mean, the, the symbol growth is, which is modeled by a linear equation, is that you get growth that depends on how many are produced and how fast. So you see these, the difference between these two pictures is just based on how many are produced. This right here has four produced per unit time. And this right here has just two. And you see that there's a huge difference between these two. But actually the real difference is time, time, um, time scale. This kind of growth right here is kind of like the growth here. So let me use a different color so you can actually see it. The, the time growth through this whole picture here, it's like the time growth in this little picture here. And the reason is that the, this right here has a factor of two involved. Instead of producing two, it's producing four, which is, oh no, no, which is twice as much. So if we do the, if we compare the population sizes, here, we have P of T. So this right here was two to the T. And this right here is P of T, which is four to the T. And you can use the exponent rules here. This is why I chose four as opposed to three, even though one cell producing three is way easier to draw. This is two squared to the T, which is two to the two T. So you see is that two T is happening at this 2t is causing it to increase at double the rate. And if you compare it to this, this right here with 4t is actually produce, it's actually going faster. It's actually going faster than this in terms of the rate. And I mean, faster than this one too. But the thing is that we only drew from time t equals zero to t equals one. It's going four times as fast. This right here is from t equals zero to t equals four. So what you see is that this picture right here goes through four step, four of its natural growth steps. This right here goes through, um, let's see, one, two, three, four. This goes through four of this is natural growth steps, but in terms of four of its natural growth steps here, that's actually um, eight of them here. And just one natural growth up here is four of this. So you can naturally see that things are getting really complicated. And if you have a general reproduction rate, well, how can you represent this? Where did this four come from? That's one way to think about it. What's happening at each step? Well, we, one way you can say is, let's start with the simple one. This right here is that you have one. You start off with one, which is your initial population. And then every time you multiply by by two, multiply by two, you multiply by two. But you can also say this is one plus one. The reason why it's useful is because there's one here, which is the initial thing you start off with. And then there's another one, which is the one that's being produced. This right here, four to the T is one plus three to the T is one, which is the one you start off with. And the three for every one that's produced. So right here, if you have one here, you could say this one goes over here, and then there are three extra ones produced. And this kind of format makes it very similar to the situation we had earlier, because what you have um, earlier, I mean, with the linear growth, because the linear growth was P of T is P naught plus um, M over K times T, just a linear growth. And, oh, there was a, there was a P naught here. Oh, I totally missed that in the formula.
because for each of the initial population, it produces M over a rate, over a period of time K. So in particular, delta P over P naught is M K delta T. So the change in population, if you normalize it, you think of the change in terms of how much is one thing in the population causing. Well, the initial population is all that's producing the rate of change. So the change is coming only as a factor of the initial population. And how much is produced? This certain rate here, the number divided by how long it takes to do a single step times how long you're waiting. So now if we go down further, what happens with the nonlinear? I mean, the, the general reproduction rate for compounded growth. So what you could say is, okay, we have one and well, let, let's, before we go that, let's do this right here. This two to the, the four, two to the four T situation. How can we think about this? Well, okay, you have one plus one P naught. So at each time step, it's single one is becoming another one. I mean, it's, it's the same as here and then it's producing one. So what, how do you think about the, in terms of time step? Well, okay, you take T and you divide by how long it takes to produce one. How long does it take to do this step here? Okay. So you divide by a fourth, which is producing the four T. So in general, what would you have? You would have P of T is P naught And then you, there's the one it starts off with and how much is produced. So you produced M of them. And then you um, produce M. And then you have to multiply by how many times you've produced. You take T and you divide by how long it takes. Now, one way to think about this is to express it in terms of something like this. This right here is the linear growth rate. So what happens is you can think of the linear as instantaneous. So remember when you draw an exponential graph here, draw a point here, this curve passing through this, even though this exponential growth right here will eventually keep increasing, if you think of just the linear approximation with the derivative, then what that captures is the idea of what is the population right here doing? And if it kept doing exactly that, and you ignore the fact that the, so if you had an initial population, P naught, that started here, and you said, okay, how much is this producing? How much is that initial population producing? Well, it's producing this much. It's gonna keep increasing with this constant rate. The exponential part comes from factoring in the fact that its offspring are also going to reproduce. But if you ignore that right there, you ignore the fact that its offspring is gonna reproduce, then you get something like this. And that's what we mean by the instantaneous growth rate. Okay, so so how can we express that in terms of the instantaneous growth rate? Well, we call the rate m over k. So it's the amount produced divided by the amount of time it takes. And this right here forms a natural unit for speed, for time. See, it scales the time. So what we can do is we can express, try to express things in terms of R. So here's M here. So, um, so we have R is M over K. So we try to express these things in terms of R. We try to put R in as many times as we can. So we have P naught, is one plus, well, M is R times K, R K. And then this K here, we try to in, input an R. So K is R over M, but maybe it's better to leave it as T over K. 
So we have this K here and we have R. We got rid of M essentially. And so what we have down here is actually this general question up here with the general population. So this right here, if it reminds you of anything, um, first, first, let's do something. Let's say T not. So K is the length of the period of time that it takes in order to produce. Let's call, um, so it's hard to find good letters. Let's call um, L. So this right here is going to be one over K because K is how long it takes for initial, for, um, for one step of the reproduction. So length, here's K. One over K is going to be the number of Ks that fit into a unit of single time, T. So remember our units of time T. So the number So it's going to be the number of reproductions that happen over a particular interval. So we can say P of T is P naught 1 plus R over, I mean, R. So here's K and L are reciprocals. So we have R over L. And then we raise this to T. So it's L T. OK. And one thing you might notice at this point is that this is actually the formula for compound interest. So this whole time we were actually talking about money, which is very interesting. Usually they start off thinking of it that way. So that's the perspective people usually take in terms of money, in terms of a bank account. But you can also think of it in terms of bacteria population growing or some other thing that follow the same rules. And why can you think of them in that same way? Because what is interest? Well, it's money reproducing. So if you have money and you put it into a bank account, you have a single dollar bill, or something like that. And then what happens? Simple interest says that it can reproduce interest and form more money. But then this money right here isn't able to produce any more money. So in that case, it's not able to reproduce. For the one with the binary fission for the reproduction of the bacteria, You have money producing more money, but then both of these numbers, both of these amounts of money are then reinvested so that they can then generate more money. And another way to think about it is that both of these dollar bills essentially are then able to reproduce and have more dollar bills. I mean, this is like better than money growing on trees, so to speak. So it's the same sort of idea about how things are growing. You can model them in exactly the same way. And the point of this interest rate is the linear interest rate that you get just by assuming that things right here are going to grow and then you ignore any compounding effects. Compounding is captured by this ugly expression right here. And if you happen to take the limit, this is where the exponential comes in. If you take the limit as so there's two different limits you can take. You can take the limit as the number of compoundings go to infinity. Or you can take the limit as the length of time it takes to reproduce or how long it takes to do a compounding goes to zero. So you do one plus kr to t over k. And because l and k are reciprocals, they're gonna get exactly the same thing. And this right here is e to the rt in both cases. Um, I attach a video. You can see this derivation if you're interested. But the idea is that what happens is that through this scaling in terms of the rate, you have t being scaled by the rate. And so it actually changes the natural unit of time. The rate is the natural way to think about how the thing is growing. So often we think about doubling time, two to the t, 
or p naught times two to the t. And this is p naught e to the natural log of two times t. The natural rate of time is log of two because that's if you look here and you say, what is this initial population? How is it growing? What's growing with this rate? Log of two, which is bigger, um, which is less than one. And so it's growing at this particular rate here. And um, that's all that you really have here. In order to go from zero to one, if you look at doubling time, it's actually getting this double. How is the whole population doubling when the instantaneous rate isn't enough to double it? So the compounding is what kicks you up the step. So this right here is what happened if you had a linear growth, the log of two growth, simple interest, simple growth rate. But because of compounding, it's able to jump up from zero, um, sorry, at time zero, with just one or P naught to two P naught, even though linear growth wouldn't get you there. E to the T is what happens when you have a, a constant rate of one each time. So instead of having, so this is what you would have with doubling, exponential actually goes higher. This is T equals one. Because remember, this, if this is 2, what is E? E is about 2.7. So it's actually bigger. And the natural rate of constant 1, if it were simple growth, it would go like this. Simple growth rate of 1 goes up like this. But because of compounding, it actually goes higher. So this sort of thing with doubling rate, um, doubling time is a little weird. But the point is, when you think about it in terms of interest rate, in terms of the simple being something that's hidden inside the compounding, in terms of an instantaneous hidden inside of the average rate of change. So that's kind of the sort of things that go on in the background. Hopefully you see that there's a lot of very interesting things going on and it's hard to appreciate a lot of the detail and the sort of structures going on when you first learn the ideas. And when you learn them later on, like in a differential equations course, you kind of brush over them quickly so that you can then get the differential equations. So at this point, we basically summarize all that you do in a pre-calculus, everything up to pre-calculus, from algebra to pre-calculus and growth rates, populations in terms of simple and compound. Usually it's in terms of money. But if you were not interested in that, you just wanted to get the differential equations, well, here's a differential equation right here. We have P of T is P naught E to the RT. And if you differentiate it, P naught times R E to the RT. And this right here is P. So this is R times P. So here's a differential equation. P prime is RP. So the rate of change is this constant R times itself. And all of the every, everything that we talked about previously is then baked into this simple equation. And it is hard to fully appreciate how, how much is really here if you just look at the equation and you just solve it. And one thing that's really important is basically what we were saying earlier. So we write the derivative here like this, dp, you divide by p, and you get r delta t. And this right here tells you, so remember, this right here was compounding continuously. When you had um, simple interest, simple rate, so constant rate, so constant rate or simple interest, you had dp over p naught is r dt. So the difference between here is that this right here, the rate of change, how much is change only comes from the initial population, P naught, which is a constant. That's why a differential equation doesn't really, isn't very useful for this situation because the solution is a line and P naught just comes from the initial condition. Here, this is why a differential equation is very useful to, for this situation because the change in P actually comes from P itself. And you see that the same side on both sides, the same right-hand side in terms of the time.
And again, one way to think about it is this is D of RT. D of RT. RT is a scaled time. R produces a natural scaling for time. So that is all that I wanted to say about this. Hopefully it wasn't too long. I mean, it definitely was too long, but hopefully you were able to skim through some of the parts and hopefully gleam something interesting off. This isn't completely necessary for anything that you do in a differential equations course. Differential equations start at this point right at the end. They kind of assume that you've had all the other ideas been filtered in to your understanding and that you're somewhat familiar with it. So for instance, the Boyce and De Prima book, what they do is they kind of go through this compound interest stuff and they take the limit and then you're done. But one way to really appreciate the growth rate is to really see how things behave when you start with a very simple, um, almost, um, you know, seventh or eighth grade situation where you have a single thing producing one other thing. And then you go to doubling and then you get into pre-calculus area. You do compound interest and then you take the limit. And then there's a whole huge story here. And hopefully that story was interesting. Okay, have a nice day.